morning. My name is Inval Ferry. Uh, currently, I'm a lecturer and a researcher at the Tel Aviv Academic College. I recently came back from postdoctorate at the Florida State uh, University under the supervision of dear uh, Gershon Tenenbaum, who is sitting here. Um, uh, one of my research uh, that I've been uh, conducted with uh, an amazing team, uh, I will present you today. And I also have the positive feeling for this uh, Winket Institute because it was my home for seven years. I did here my bachelor degree and master's degree. And today we'll be focusing on the preparedness of uh, a before a, a motor task and also on the psychological states uh, such as self-efficacy, anxiety, and emotions. Um, I will briefly go over the introduction of the research and, uh, and the intervention, and finally I will present the results and some interesting conclusions. So uh, first of all, um, I'm going to define what is the uh, pre-performance routine. A pre-performance routine is an organic set of mental and motor skills that are executed right prior to uh, implementation of a, a motor task uh, within an inner uh, independent rhythm. And there are many academic research and studies uh, that explore the preparedness uh, before uh, implementation of a performance. Uh, also, we can see a lot of skills uh, that can be taught uh, to prepare the athletes right before their uh, uh, skill. And um, also you can see uh, in a, um, right before a, a close self-paced motor task. For example, in basketball, the shooter have five seconds to prepare himself standing on the penalty line and uh, have the, the, uh, prepare himself to do the penalty throw. Uh, in tennis, uh, they have uh, 20 seconds. And I want you to think about what uh, a, an endurance task, what they do, and, uh, such as swimming. Uh, so if uh, uh, we want to explore their uh, preparation, we know uh, by uh, research, acad academic research, that uh, pre-performance routine um, improve performance by regulation of arousal level, uh, focusing attention on relevant cues, um, increasing self-efficacy, and also uh, achieving an optimal psychological state. For example, in anxiety and self-efficacy, self-control, and um, okay. So this is why uh, our aim uh, was to test uh, the pre-performance routine, the effectiveness of the preparation uh, immediately before a swimming simulated race uh, among uh, elite athletes, uh, swimmers. Uh, and to measure their uh, performance by speed and uh, uh, biomechanical analysis, uh, their self-efficacy, anxiety, and emotion. Uh, so we recruit uh, 46 uh, National Collegiate Athletic Association Division One from FSU. Uh, their mean age was uh, 20 years old and um, um, we divided them to experimental and control group uh, based on their previous pre-performance routine uh, that we uh, knew from their uh, uh, questions that we asked them. Um, they also reported uh, 20, around 20 hours uh, um, practice in a week and um, uh, because we wanted them to uh, commit it to the simulated race, we gave them the opportunity to choose uh, their best stroke. So uh, they could choose uh, uh, to do a breast, fly, a backstroke, uh, and freestyles. Our measurement, uh, we, we measured, uh, first of all, we did a manipulation check. Uh, we wanted to uh, see their uh, rating of perceived exertion. Uh, we know from other research that if uh, they have a high rating of RPE, they are uh, bringing all their effort 
to uh, invest in the performance. And also we gave them uh, questions about their pre-performance routine. Uh, if they uh, ask questions that um, like, uh, are you aware of doing this uh, preparation? Are you doing this before any uh, performance? Uh, we measured their uh, performance uh, in speed and biomechanical analysis. Um, we measure, uh, we asked from expert coaches to measure by stopwatch and uh, for the biomechanical analysis we installed cameras a 25 yard mark uh, facing the uh, starting block um, we also measured their uh, self-efficacy and uh, according to Bandura's guideline um, to measure the belief uh, we need a certain condition, in our case it's the swimming, under a, a certain a, a simulation, the simulation a competition, and that have common uh, properties. Uh, okay. What else we measured? It was a whole uh, package of uh, questionnaires. Um, we measured their uh, anxiety and we uh, measured their um, somatic and cognitive anxiety and exclu exclude the self-confidence questions and uh, their emotion um, we use the individualized uh, emotion uh, profile the procedure we did a pre-test the intervention and the uh, post-test uh, first of all, uh, we gave them instruction about uh, the research and what they are going to go through. Uh, we asked the coach to do the speech to get them and recruit them about uh, um, the pressure to, to bring them uh, about the simulated race. That this is very uh, 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 strong uh, competition that they have to bring all the effort. Uh, we gave them the anxiety scale. They did a warm up of uh, uh, 15 minutes, uh, their uh, best stroke that they had to comp compete. And um, uh, we gave them three minutes behind black to prepare themselves for, the, for uh, all the sample. We didn't uh, say anything about the pre performance routine at the pre test. But afterwards, with the experimental group, uh, we instructed them about the the pre-performance routine, and I will tell you about the intervention uh, in one minute. And then they did the simulated race, and after that, we gave them the package of the questionnaires. Uh, we divided them to two groups: a experimental group and control group. Uh, the exper experimental group um, got a, a four sessions. And according to Singer's approach, the five-step approach, um, we know that uh, to the athlete to prepare himself, first of all, he has to do the read reading, uh, focusing, imaging, and okay, who knows about pre-performance routine? Someone know? <coughs> okay, attention. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, at the end, they had to evaluate their performance. And so at the first session, we combined of a motor uh, aspect and mental aspect uh, about their breathing. Uh, we asked them to, uh, and guided them about deep and diaphragmatic breathing. And for the motor aspect, we observed um, their a, a motor a, a, a behaviors. We saw patterns of clapping their body, shaking, jumping, a, and stretching. And on the second session, um, we guided them about uh, to visualize, to do imagery, uh, and according to length the theory, uh, the bioinformational theory. Um, uh, when the stimulus occur, when you imagine and you rehearse your performance, uh, it's stored in long-term working memory, and uh, you can uh, um, uh, uh, do the performance the best uh, that you can. And in the third session, uh, we instructed them about focusing attention on relevant cues, and also we know that external uh, attention promotes automaticity, 
and also uh, dealing with the fresher, more properties. Uh, at the third, uh, the fourth session, uh, we asked them to choose a motivational word, and uh, they could uh, choose a, a positive word. Uh, they did uh, this whole uh, preparation three times behind block uh, for three minutes, and they could choose to individualize the, the step of the uh, pre-performance routine. We know that this uh, uh, um, all the athletes can take the, um, uh, what they really need uh, by individual um, concerns. So the interesting preliminary result um, about the uh, RPE, uh, we didn't find uh, the, um, any significant about uh, their um, uh, the time or the condition by time uh, interaction. About their uh, pre-performance routine, we found that 96 of the experimental group, the swimmers that uh, uh, participate in the experimental group, um, did um, um, used a structured PPR and also 91 uh, from the control group also uh, did a, a structured pre-performance routine. About self-efficacy, um, we didn't find here a, a significant uh, differences, but if we look at the descriptive statistics, we can see a trend that uh, uh, for both uh, conditions, uh, from pre to post, self-efficacy uh, increase. Uh, about state anxiety, we can see at this table, mean and standard deviation of self-efficacy, uh, somatic uh, and a, a cognitive anxiety. And uh, here we found that uh, cognitive anxiety has a, a significant effect. Um, let's move faster. Uh, there, this is the interesting uh, results. Um, we found a significant time by balance interaction. The balance uh, we differentiate by a positive and negative, uh, or the function, if it's helpful or harmful. And we, we found here that uh, they have uh, increased their uh, positive emotion and decreased in a negative emotion in both conditions. So uh, to conclude, uh, our aim was to test the effectiveness of pre-performance routine prior to a swimming race simulation competition uh, and their uh, performance, efficacy, anxiety, and um, uh, emotions. Uh, we found positively a significant uh, effect on swimmers' emotional states, but uh, uh, on the self-efficacy, uh, we see only the descriptive statistics, but we cannot uh, go and publish it. Uh, our limitations, uh, we had small and highly expert uh, swimmers that uh, if we want to generalize to other population, we have to, uh, this is very uh, li uh, big uh, limitation. So um, it's also uh, this uh, uh, pre-performance routine uh, is most of the research are directly to a self-paced motor task. And we did this uh, pre-performance routine right before an endurance task. So this, uh, um, um, we suggest uh, for future research to uh, uh, bring an innovative approach about pre-performance routine right before an endurance task. And um, also uh, for sports psychology consultants, uh, it can uh, be an evidence-based tool to improve their uh, uh, athletes and push their limits um, for the sport context. And try to imagine uh, the swimmers uh, going out of the pool and uh, trying to answer the questions when they wet. This is the anecdote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I also have here a, like a brochure if someone is interested, I will go through it. Okay. The next presenter is Melissa. Thank you.